What does it take to build bigger biceps? Is it curling a massive amount of weight? Or is it limiting your sets and your rep count per week to make sure that you don't overdo it? Stay locked in in this video and I'm gonna give you my best tips for bigger, better, and more developed biceps. What is up guys? Welcome back to Liftaholics TV. Today it is all about biceps. I'm going to take you through a couple exercises to show you how to maximize each and every one to help you get more developed, fuller, bigger biceps, teaching you how to fit in those t-shirts a little bit differently this summer. So we're going to go through a couple exercises, full bicep workout. I'm going to drop a couple cues on you to let you know how I maximize each and every exercise that I use to get more developed biceps. Let's start over here on the cable machine. Whenever I'm hitting my biceps, the first thing that I always start off is with the cable machine, or at least I try to. Uh, the cables always provide a little bit more tension than the dumbbells, which doesn't mean that we're not gonna utilize them later on in the workout, but I always start off with the cable machines, whether it's one of four or five exercises, you can really do a lot with the cables, but today we're just gonna focus on these two main exercises. So I'll try and superset these two exercises because each of these exercises are hitting your bicep a little bit differently. So I normally start off with the basic curl and then I'll superset that with the drag curl. I try and get somewhere between 10, 15 reps on each side, but there's a couple of things that's gonna help you maximize each exercise, get that growth and that strength up on your bicep muscles. The first thing that I need to make sure that I'm doing if I wanna grow my biceps and I wanna get bigger, more developed biceps, is I have to make sure that I'm keeping the tension on my bicep the entire set. And a lot of times you can get caught up with taking the tension off your bicep, trying to do more reps or more weight, or just having overall bad form. What people will do to try and move the weight up more, try and get more reps or move more weight, the first thing that they're trying to do is they're shrugging their shoulders up to bring the weight. So when I'm bringing this weight up, my shoulders are coming with me. This is taking tension off my bicep. So now I'm turning this bicep curl into a shoulder shrug. Now I'm hitting some of my traps. Now I'm hitting a little bit of bicep. Now I'm hitting a little bit of shoulders. So I want to make sure I'm keeping that tension on my bicep. So to do that, I got to make sure when I'm curling, my shoulders are in this fixed, relaxed position. And when I curl up, I'm using my bicep only. And I'm not shrugging up here. What is up guys, it's Marlon here. Just reminding you guys that if you're liking the video, if you're feeling the channel, go ahead and make sure you hit that like button and that subscribe button. This will only further help me understand what kind of content you guys are feeling, what you guys are vibing with and which ones you are not. But make sure you don't get out of here without hitting that subscribe button. That is only gonna help and push this channel a little bit further. Back to the video. Your elbow position is also essential when you're doing curls. So a lot of times people like to keep their elbows kind of tucked in or behind their body or right here on their torso. It's not gonna help you maximize the basic curl. So whether we got cables, whether we got dumbbells, a straight bar, easy curl bar, the principles are all the same. Instead of having my elbows locked in on the side of me, I could just slightly push them forward a little bit. Take kind of a step back here and that's gonna put more tension on my bicep when I'm curling up. So if you're trying to get more out of the bicep curl, just take that one simple movement and push your elbows towards the front of your torso. That's gonna help you put a little bit more tension on your bicep than it would if you have them tucked in right here. So I'm gonna push them forward right here before I go. And then now we're repping out. Now this drag curl is an exercise that I added maybe like two or three years ago. And I did it one time and my biceps were like sore for like the rest of the week. So I just kept including that exercise into my arm day or my bicep day or whatever I was doing that included biceps in because it does hit your bicep in a different way. But if you're doing it incorrectly, you're not gonna be able to hit your bicep. So there's a couple of things you gotta pay attention to when you're doing this exercise. The first thing is consistent with any other bicep exercise. It's your tempo. Whether I'm doing the drag curl and I'm getting to the top here and I'm squeezing and then I'm slowly getting a nice three second count down. That's gonna help increase the time under tension. Meaning I got 
tension on a bicep muscle longer than I would if I were to just drop this right here. It doesn't make any sense to do that. I'm not getting as much out of the exercise as I can. So when I come up and I squeeze, I want to drop and I'm going for three seconds. And you can apply that principle to even a basic curl. So when I come up with a basic curl here, I'm squeezing, then I'm coming down, getting a nice three second count. Then I'm coming right back up. Three, two, one. That's going to help you maximize any exercise when you're doing biceps. This next exercise is very controversial. Well, I won't say very controversial, but I've heard a lot of negative things towards it. And for me personally, it's one of my favorite exercises to work my biceps with when it comes to the dumbbell section. And that is the ISO hole with either the hammer curl or the regular curl. So what I'm basically doing is I'm keeping one of my biceps at this hold position right here, static hold position. So I always got tension right here in my biceps the whole time and I'm just holding it there. Then while I'm doing this other one, I'm using all them same principles. I'm using a good tempo and lowering, I'm using a full range. So while this one's working, this one's holding. And then after that, I drop that, I hold here and I'm working it here. That kills my biceps every single time I use the exercise. Uh, don't skip that, whether I'm doing a variation with the hammer curl or whether I'm doing a variation with the basic curl. I always keep that one in there. It kills my biceps every single time. Make sure you add some of these to your workout. One thing that I always do whenever I, I do the basic curl with the dumbbell is I make sure that I'm always in a supinated position. So what that means is when I'm pulling this dumbbell up, I'm slightly rotating my pinky towards the outside, which gives the dumbbell this slightly tilted appearance when I'm up here, when I'm up high. And then when I come down, I can really leave it just like that. Some people like to come here and then twist it on the way. It's just a matter of personal preference. But if I twist my pinky to the outside on the way up right here, I'm gonna hit that peak of my bicep. You're gonna feel a little pinch right in the middle of your bicep. That's that peak working. So I always use that whenever I'm doing the dumbbell curls in order to maximize and make sure that I'm hitting every single part of my bicep that I can when I'm doing this exercise. So when I'm looking straight across, straight at myself, when I'm looking in the mirror, if I come up, if I come up here, this isn't supinated at all. That dumbbell is looking straight across. But if I slightly turn it right here, then I come up here, that's gonna help me maximize that set. And I feel those peaks working, I feel that little pinch right when I get to the top and I'm squeezing, and I'm still lowering using that good three second count to get to the bottom. And I'm gonna work through the whole set. I always like to switch it up a little bit. So I always add a couple exercises where I'm doing my curls standing up, but then I'll also add in a couple sets or a couple exercises where I'm sitting down. So all that I'm doing is really just making sure that I'm keeping the tension fully on my bicep. Sometimes when you're standing curling up, you can inadvertently move your body or momentum swing to kind of get those last couple reps. But when I'm sitting down, it's a lot harder to swing my body and use momentum to move the weight. I really got to focus in and make sure that I'm using just my bicep muscle. So I'm always doing a couple sets where I'm just seated to make sure that I keep all that tension on the bicep and I'm not momentum swinging it at all. If I want to make sure that I'm hitting my biceps in the most effective way possible and i'm making sure i'm not wasting my time in here when i'm doing biceps i have to make sure i'm using a full range of motion now a lot of times you can cut the movement short because you're either using too much weight or maybe your biceps exhausted from the set that you're on or other sets that you've already done before this but you always got to remember it's quality over quantity so if i'm getting a lot of bad reps then i'm really just missing the whole point of doing the exercise or whatever muscle group that i'm working I want to make sure that I'm getting the most effective reps, not necessarily the most reps. So using the preacher curl is a good example of making sure that I'm using a full range of motion. So whenever I get tired, a lot of people might just stop it right here and then bring it right back up. I'm only hitting a partial rep when I'm doing this right here. But if I make that muscle, but if I lengthen that muscle out and I stretch it out, I'm going to get a lot better stretch. And I'm going to get a lot more effective reps like that then I would just cutting it short, pump it in like this, to bring it all the way down here, using a good tempo, and then bring it all the way back up, 
and I'm getting some really nice reps like that. That is it guys for biceps. Make sure you take a couple of these tips with you the next time you hit biceps in order to help you develop and get bigger and better biceps. If you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button on the channel and that notification button so you can be up to date on any other videos that I drop in the future. I will see you next time.